Let's open our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 3. Amen. Now it says that honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. Now let's look at the next verse. Verse 10. Be filled with plenty and your, your vase will overflow with new wine. Now, it means that God is simply saying that one of the things he wants believers to do for him is to honor him with what we have. Your dress must honor God. Your shoe must honor God. The teeth that you have, when you smile, it must honor God. Are you with me? Your makeup must honor God. Your hairstyle must honor God. Are you with me? If even you are insulting, it must honor God. He said, honor the Lord with your substance, the first fruit of your increase. So shall your bands be filled. That is not enough. And your vast overflow with new wine. In other words, he will give you an overflow of what you give him. And what else you will do is that you will fill with new wine. In other words, any season, you'll be happy. You will have joy. That joy that makes you move, go to work, do so many things. Now, the problem with the average believer is that we don't honor God with what we have. We don't honor God with what we have. Whatever we have doesn't please God. God gives you a dress, a material. You have to honor God. You sew it to your ribs so that your skin will show. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah, it's a, it's a nice dress, but it should honor God. It should do what? I didn't hear you. If you were wearing nose marks, let it honor God. That nose mask is not a few pot. It is black, but it has turned to brownish ash. Now, honor God also with your shoe. Let me tell you this. I will advise you, don't go to your room with your shoe. Do you understand? Especially if you have a child at home. Leave your shoe outside. Your room is a holy ground where God dwells. So honor God with your room. When you go outside, you don't know if somebody has spat outside. And you two have stepped on it. Are you with me? Then you two go home. And then you step on everywhere. And these are children. They eat on the floor. They are biscuit falls. They pick it. They even play on the ground. And then they'll put their hand back into their nose, into their mouth. So when you get home, look at someone say, my house is the house of God. Yeah, God told Moses, the place you are standing is holy ground. Remove your sandals. So you remove your sandals. If the floor is too cold, wear socks. Are you, are you with me? Yeah. Honor the Lord with your substance. Anything you have must be honorable to God. Finito. But then he goes on to say, honor the Lord and wait. That is different. And means in addition. With the first fruits of all your increase. In other words, anytime God adds something new to you, the first must be given to God. Actually, I have a practice. Beginning of the year, I give first fruit. End of the year, I give last fruit. Well, don't copy me if you don't understand what I do. This morning, I, yesterday, I was preparing my teaching for this morning, and the Lord said something to me which is interesting. He said, Francis, many people want to catch the spirit. I said, yes. He said, then the Lord said, but do you know that sometimes you can never catch the spirit until you have caught the knowledge? I said, I don't understand. Then he began to teach me. Because if you catch the knowledge, you can easily catch the spirit. You can catch the spirit, but if you don't understand how the spirit operates, the spirit will kill you. Fire 
is a good servant until you make fire a master. Money is a good servant until you make money a master. When you make money control your life, you will forever be poor. You must decide what to do with money. Anytime something is the one that tells you what to do with it, the person is your master. I'm your leader because I tell you what to do. Are you with me? The day I tell you to do something and you don't do it, you are out of my jurisprudence. I learned it from Jesus when Jesus said that if you love me, you would obey my commandments. And I always said that a sign of love is obedience to a command, not because you want to. Am I talking to somebody here? So look at somebody and say, this year you must honor God with your first fruit. Okay, I know you are confused. So take me to Cain and Abel. I'm looking about Cain and Abel. It doesn't matter to God what you offer until you offer what he wants you to offer. So Genesis chapter 4, the Bible actually made us to understand that Cain gave crops, right? And Abel gave what? Rams. But the difference between all that they gave, that doesn't mean that God doesn't take crops. Is that if you read what Abel brought, let's read verse 4. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. Now you realize that Abel's offering was first fruit. Cain's offering was not first. One of the cardinal reasons why Cain's offerings were all rejected was because he brought his one of their fruits. Now if you want, if you have a lot of goat and sheep, and you want to bring the first to God and the fat one, you know you have to do such. True of us. You have to take this goat, examine the goat, carry the goat. There was no weight. Check the weight and say that, oh, wait, wait, no more do. This one, God can't have it. Stay back. Then you take this one, wait, there more ha. I think I quack or shit. We are just going to burn it. So he was just looking at what was available, but Abel was looking at first fruit. Someone say, first fruit. Now, why did God respect the first fruit? Because as long as you bring the first fruit, if your second is cocoa, cassava, no problem. Now, most often, I tell people this thing, that if in bringing your tithe, make sure it is the first that is removed before you buy anything. You must always, the first transaction you must do with your salary, your pay, your wage, your gift. I've been giving offering. I've been giving offering. I've been sowing seed and nothing is happening. You didn't give the first. You see, tithe is a covenant between you and God. It is not by force. It is trying to say that I have people and it's interesting. Some of them are not members of Bridge. I have a son who every year does first fruit and last fruit. So every year, if you watch every year, beginning of the day, you have some t-shirts I put on with the embroidery on it. He doesn't use his machine to do anybody's work until he has done my work. That is what he does. He doesn't, he's not in this church. Now, what happens with first fruit is that or tight is that you can decide not to allow, okay, our people, let me go back, who are not even members of this ministry, who monthly give me something from their company. Me, I don't work there. I don't work there. But when the thing reflects in my system, I laugh. And I ask, is it your tight? He said, no, this is not my tight. This is for you. And I said, well, why? Do I work for your company? He said, you more than work. Your counsel, your advice, and your prayer. 
So in such instance, I have to make sure that if I was the one who has been assigned a specific role every day, I do it. Is it true or is it not true? So what I'm trying to say is that tight is not compulsory. But it's a covenant you do as a sign that you honor God and you see God as he's a part of your finances. So if let's say you are giving tithe of 10 CDs a month and currently your, your boss, Jehovah God, has watched and now business has gone down so you are rather receiving 2 CDs. Be very faithful and bring God 20 pesos to embarrass him. It is not your fault. If you are embarrassed with two 20 pesos, then you are, your, you are the head of the business. The reason why you should not be worried about whether it is two pesos, two cities, or 20 cities, or two million is because what he has watched over for you to have in a given month is your faithfulness. Like, there are some people, like Pastor Daniel, I know where you work. You, you get commissions. If the whole month you decide to roam and roam and roam and roam and roam and roam, and you come back and tell the company that nobody's buying, nobody's buying insurance, nobody's re reinsuring, nobody's doing that, they'll say, God bless you, go home. When at the end of the month you see that they are giving you poor, take this, take this, you say, my own, they'll say that you brought nothing. Or it's not true. Eh? So if you only brought two people who paid, let's say, 20 CDs insurance, <laughs> they will give you your commission from your 20 CDs insurance. Then you see your neighbor taking $20,000 insurance. They say, ah, we are all in the company. We all work here. Why is somebody taking this? Now, what you had is what you are commissioned to receive. In that same way, what God has given you is what he is commissioned to receive. I will never tell you to increase it to make God happy. No, let God know that he has not been fair with you. Are you with me here? So a lot of us don't respect God with our first fruit. And then we present second, third, and all those things. You say that things are not working well. I always say this thing that, and I'm very particular about firstborns. I was talking to somebody who was complaining about his children. I said, just make sure that your firstborn is correct. The other children will follow. It, it's natural. The other children will naturally follow. I'm an example. Because when the first is holy, everything becomes holy. Now, look at somebody and say, this year, you must be faithful with your first fruit and your tithe so that God will increase you. So anybody who doesn't give his first fruit or his tithe, the opposite is that he does not honor God. Yeah. Now close your eyes and ask God to forgive you if you have a covenant with him on your offerings and your tithe. And you have not been faithful. We were singing the song, All my life you've been faithful. All my life you've been so, so good. And as the Lord gave me another chance. Sometimes all the medicine you are buying is that tight. The devourer has not been rebuked, so the devourer is taking his portion. The devourer will always take his portion. The devourer will always take his portion, whether you like it or not. But when you make a covenant with God, he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your own sake, not for his sake. He doesn't need it. And I will sing of your goodness, O oh God. Yes. 
I want you to be very nice and talk to God. Say, God, give me another chance. Cain looked at Abel and he was jealous. As to what he did with his first friends, nobody knows. And me and you know that anything you give first is painful. It's painful. But that is the striking of the covenant. Two things that are painful to give is the first and the last. The last meat. The last meat. If there's food, let me take mine before you take yours. In my house, they wait for me to come. Then they serve food. But as a head of the house, I must be served first. If you go to the king's table, you sit at the king's table, no matter how hungry you are, you don't start eating. Until the king serves himself first. Until your host has served himself. Then you can also have access to the food. Except the host says, eat. And when you see the host take one ladder, you dare not take two ladders. Now say, Lord Jesus, this year being our year of righteousness, let every devourer be rebuked for my sake. As I honor you, let every devourer be rebuked for my sake. Devourers of sickness, poverty, shame, anything that makes me spend money, let it be rebuked out of my life in the name of Jesus. Now lift your voice and pray. Sometimes I can spend all kinds of money buying pawns to look beautiful. The Lord must rebuke that thing. You're buying all kinds of perfumes to smell good. Because you know there's a body odor. He says, I will rebuke that devourer. Thank you, Jesus.